Hi, this video will look at how to convert a diesel engine to run using vegetable oil. This was actually created as part of our UK veggie oil tour, which was part funded by the European Union. We will talk about that at the end of the video. But first of all, we're going to look at using vegetable oil in a diesel car. Now, petrol prices could reach a new record. Petrol has become much more expensive over the past 10 years. There's been a lot of talk in the uh, newspapers and on the radio this last couple of weeks about people running their cars, their diesel engine cars, I should say, on vegetable oil. It's used cooking oil, the gunk that gets left at the bottom of deep fat fryers. Anybody who had a diesel car could just pour the stuff straight into the gas tank and it would run fine. Good idea. to waste vegetable oil, you will need a stack of old newspapers, some ridiculous looking overalls, a suitable rainproof workspace and a large storage container with a tap, various sized funnels, plenty of waste veggie oil, a 400 micron filter. This is the first filter to use and it will basically just remove the chips and other chunks of food that have been left in the oil. Alternatively, you could just use an old pair of jeans. These two filter well, but get plugged easily and make a little more mess. Three sock filters, a 10 micron, a 5 micron and a 1 micron. The three sock filters slot inside one another, so you pour the oil only once, but it filters through all three. Make sure that the 1 micron is the last to receive the oil. In case you're wondering, 1 micron is equal to 1 1,007 millimeter. All of these filters can be purchased on eBay. Before you start filtering the oil, it is recommended to leave it to settle. This means that all the thick fatty oil will sink to the bottom. In winter, only use the thin oil which floats on the top. Label it summer oil and use it when the weather warms up, so the oil will stay thin in your tank. Once filtered to 1 micron, be sure to leave the oil to settle once again this time ideally for a month. Any water in the oil will have time to settle to the bottom and the good oil can be pumped off to use. The water gets into oil from frozen foods and it's important not to have water in your engine. And that's it, that's how to get down to virtually zero on your diesel consumption. Consider the average diesel car produces nearly three tons of CO2 a year. By switching to waste vegetable oil, you can expect to cut your driving emissions to zero. Not only is it legal in the UK, you can also use two and a half thousand litres a year, tax free. How to convert a diesel engine to run using vegetable oil. Cold oil is thick. This is the only real difference when considering oils as a fuel. So if you heat it up, it will become thin like diesel. Let's talk about the two tank system. We'll come back to this diagram for the two tank system in just a moment. First we're just going to talk about how the system works. An auxiliary diesel tank, usually 20 or 30 litres, is fitted into the car boot. The diesel in this tank is used only to start and run the vehicle from cold until the engine and vegetable oil are at operating temperature. This usually only takes a few minutes. Vegetable oil is stored in the original diesel tank as this is larger, often around 60 plus litres. The vegetable oil in this tank passes through a variety of heaters, ensuring that by the time it reaches the engine, it is thin and ready for combustion. The heaters turn on at the flick of a switch. Once the engine is at operating temperature, 
warmed vegetable oil can be used for the entire journey. A few minutes before arriving at the final destination, the system is switched back to use diesel from the auxiliary tank. This ensures that fuel lines are flushed through to prime it ready for the new cold start. You must first turn to flush, then after a few minutes return to diesel. Before converting your engine, try on a warm day to see how it runs using a 70-30 vegetable oil diesel mix. If there is no change in how it starts or accelerates, alter the ratio to 50-50. Finally, increase the amount of vegetable oil in the mix to 70% whilst reducing the amount of diesel to just 30. If you don't notice any real changes in how the car starts and drives, you should be ready to consider a two-tank engine conversion. Something else to consider is the age of the car. Diesel cars manufactured pre-2000 have basic computer and electronic systems. Our Mercedes Vito was a 2003 model and consequently had a computer system that needed attention even before we filled it up with veg oil. That said, once converted, we did run several thousand miles using WVO, but our lesson learned and thinking now is to convert older cars, vans and trucks. Okay, so we've made up this diagram. This is for the two tank vid oil conversion system. It lists the components and also where they go in line and what happens at each stage. So top left is what used to be the original diesel tank. This is now what you use for your vegetable oil. And then on the top right, you can see the auxiliary diesel tank. This will be the tank that's inside of the boot and only used for diesel. So looking at the diagram, you can see that there are two lines. There's the green line, which represents the vegetable oil and the black line which represents the diesel. As the veg oil leaves its tank, it's soon met by one of the first of three heaters. This is a coolant fed heater, uh, it's a heat exchanger and basically like a little radiator. As you can see there are four connectors on it, two inputs and two outputs. Simply cut into your engine's existing coolant line and plumb this heat exchanger in. Likewise with your diesel fuel line, plumb this in between also. As the engine coolant passes through the heat exchanger, the metal is warmed up and so too is the veg oil which passes through simultaneously. Now this is a great heater as it does not need any electricity to function. This means that you are preheating your veg oil from the moment you start your engine. So after the first heater, the veg oil will pass through an inline pre-filter. Um, now it's best to get a clear filter basically so you can see the condition of the oil and also to get an understanding of when the filter needs changing. So you can see that the veg oil now passes through a three-way valve. This valve is used to switch between veg oil or diesel moving towards the engine. Um, it's probably a good time to mention that to install the diesel tank you just need to fix it into the boot, drill a hole through the boot floor, run the fuel line through that hole and carry it all the way along the bottom of the car fixing it with cable ties, uh, bring it up into the engine bay and then plumb it into this three-way valve. As you can see now the flow of diesel and vegetable oil mirror each other. They go into one pipe so depending how the valve is positioned, either diesel or veg oil will pass through the second fuel heater. Now this heater runs off a 12 volt car battery and it's powered by two glow plugs. As the veg oil passes through this heater, the glow plugs heat up the oil. It's worth noting that this heater is thermostat operated. The idea is to save the life of the glow plug so that it's not on continuously for long journeys, just to get the oil to operating temperature, switches off, comes back in when it starts to cool. Now the oil finally goes into the third and final of the heaters. This is a 12 volt wraparound heat exchanger. This goes onto the fuel filter, the one that comes with the car. It's basically a blanket. It just velcros up and it slots on top. Um, it's very simple to fit, literally takes a few minutes, but it's really important. So any gunk, any oil that's inside of that fuel filter, it's going to start getting heated and made nice and thin. Okay, so now that the veg oil has been heated three times and filtered twice, it is ready to combust inside of your engine cylinders. So with our Mercedes CDI, which is a common rail, we have an excess leak off. This excess rejoins the circuit and at the returning loop valve, it can go one of two directions. The valve will either direct the fuel back to the 12 volt electric inline heater, where of course once again it will be heated, filtered and sent for combustion, or the returning loop valve will actually channel the fuel back to the veggie tank. Now, as you can see on the diagram, this red line represents the closed loop system, which is the normal running circuit. The valve will open when the driver manually switches to flush. Uh, this will be at the end of the journey. 
Now the idea is this means that diesel will be sent along the fuel line and all of the veggie oil is flushed back into the veggie tank. There will of course be diesel sent into this tank occasionally but that doesn't matter. It's just a case of perfecting the length of time you flush for. This valve will also open automatically via a thermostat signal when driving long distances. When the veg oil is at above operational temperature, the thermostat will recognise this. Now, the idea of this is that the hot oil will be sent back around the circuit, sent to the veggie tank, where it can mix with the cold oil and help avoid congealing in the tank. Cool. Well, I hope that was pretty easy to follow and not too dry. It's really important to also get a workshop manual for your vehicle. This will give you a good understanding of how the engine actually works, your coolant system, the electrics, and of course the fuel line. You can often pick these up secondhand online or even on CD. If you are looking for more information, do check out our website, www.thepoosh.org forward slash veggie dash promo dash tour. In winter 2012, a group of friends from the UK developed the concept to create a service that connects UK youth with volunteering opportunities at sustainable self-build projects. Sustainable self-build techniques are a serious, rational and innovative response to combat some of the environmental and economic challenges that face mankind in the 21st century. Due to the nature of traditional, natural and alternative building methods, many of the skills required to self-build a sustainable home can be learned and developed in a matter of hours as opposed to years. For thousands of years humans have built houses together. Voluntary help at self-build projects is not a new concept, but a single web platform to connect them is. Our group received funding from the European Union Youth in Action Programme for the project that kick-started the global community known as the PUSH.org. The project, which was known as the PUSH for DIY Environmental and Economic Alternatives, received funding to convert the Mercedes Vito with a two-tank system and tour the UK using WVO. Over 20 locations were visited on the tour, which stretched from southern England, through Wales, and up to northern Scotland. The tour was a great success, and as a result, the People's Organisation on Sustainable Housing has organically evolved faster and further than anyone could have predicted. The Push.org is now a registered not-for-profit organisation and is free to join and use. For more information how you too can participate on a European Youth in Action programme, visit www.eacea.ec.europa.eu forward slash youth. To learn more about sustainable self-builds, to join the movement and to create your free volunteer or build site project profile, visit www.thepush.org. You can also check out the Facebook page, thepush.org.